Hi, welcome to the lecture on Envorita Reputation for Animals. Now, this is the last video on the on the kidneys and water balance. So let's think now on the what is the idea that okay why we have the kidneys is on the nitrogen waste products. Not so much we think that okay we are tolerating the, uh, regulating the water balance. So let's look first that okay we can get different kind of food. In the food we have carbon, we have hydrogen, we have oxygen and we have nitrogen. We have nitrogen in the amino acids, we have nitrogen in the nucleic acids. And from these sources, of course, we are producing our biomolecules. And in some cases, we can store the energy in sugars or lipids. But because we are then, of course, uh, cutting these proteins, or nucleic acid 4 to energy metabolism, then we are having the nitrogen waste. And in the nitrogen waste, we can have different products. Uh, we have ammonia, we have urea, and we have uric acid. And we can see that the ammonia is very simple and very small molecule. The urea is already a little bit larger, but the good point is that okay, you are releasing two nitrogens per one molecule. In the uric acid, you are already releasing four nitrogens, but it's it's a enormous molecule to compare these others. And these all are the main uh, end product of the nitrogen waste in different animals. In the ammonia. The animals that are using mainly ammonia, they are called ammonitalic, and they are all aquatic. Those animals, like humans, that are producing mo mostly urea, we are uratelic, and we are terrestrial. And these animals that are using, uh, producing more mainly uric acid or related molecules, they are uh, uricotelic, like reptiles, birds, and surprise spiders, the spiders are using this guanine. And in these uh, presence, we can see that how much in the human urine we have different molecules. So 96% is urine, urea, but there is still a little bit ammonia there, there is still a little bit uric acid. So if so, uh, different animals are using these th different molecules, so why? There must be some benefits. The good point in the ammonia is that you can just cut these molecules. It's very simple to, to produce the ammonia. It's a very low energy need. It's highly water soluble. So that means that, okay, if you have plenty of water, you can wash this ammonia away from your body. Uh, then the urea, it's a good thing, that, okay, it's non-toxic, so we can have high concentration in the blood. We were discussing in the shark that it was having very, very high urea concentration in the blood. And, but the good thing is okay at least that if when it's, you, you can tolerate high concentration then you can uh it, you require less water for excreting this and in some cases animals are using this uric acid and the good point is th is that it's actually not very well water soluble so therefore if you have the uric acid, usually you have some kind of salt and there is only very limited amount of water and therefore it's more like a chill than liquid. It can even be almost a solid particle. But of course, if you have some benefits, then why not using the ammonia because it would be the low energy need? 
Well, there are only also problems. Ammonia is killing. It's highly toxic. We mu can't have more than 0 0.3 millimol per liter in the blood. Ten times less, or even well, even more, uh, even less uh, uh, than than urea. Also, in the urea, there are some problems. It's we need four or five ATP to produce one urea molecule. So that means that if we are using proteins as our energy product for each amino acid. We need two ATPs to uh, get rid of it, of these nitrogens. And the same thing also happens in the uric acid. So over here we have plenty of, of carbon, plenty of oxygen. These, these could be used for energy metabolism easily. And, and, and also the production of uric acid is not happening so simple that than the ammonia and even the problem can be that because it's not very very well water soluble so it it might be difficult to get rid of it okay let's look first on on the ammonia how we can get the rid of it the uh, aquatic animals are just releasing it on the on the surrounding because there's water available so it's a hydrophilic and very small molecule and because it's so small it can be transported inside a membrane protein so we have uh exchangers that are moving uh ammonia out from the cell and taking sodium inside and we have pumps that are pumping ammonia in and pumping sodium out and in some cases also it's can be flowing also by diffusion so it can be for, uh, going dif by diffusion in in this uh, non-charged form and in the chill epithelium it also moves with the in this uh, charged form so it's very simple to release but it must be released all the time so therefore these animals need uh, a lot of water sources and in terrestrial animals no one uses it except these isopods we were discussing on these isopods already earlier uh, they were these uh, uh, small bug-like animals that are always underground because they are losing so much water. And actually, they are secreting this ammonia as a gas. Okay, this urea production is common in terrestrial vertebrates and also in the elasma branch. So it's in several places. In these sharks... They are not very near cousins for humans. So it's it's been developed several times in the vertebrate evolution. So the terrestrial animals are using it and the shark that are very far from it. And some telephists are also using it in the driving, uh, drying and, and environments like the lungfish. And the interesting thing is that all vertebrates have the genes to produce the enzymes for uh, producing urea. They're just not using it. Okay. The waste product can be changed. And in one case, we have one animal that is first ter uh, aquatic and then semi-terrestrial. So in the amphibian tadpole, it releases ammonia. It's so simple to produce, so it's much better to use the ATP for growing as fast as possible. 
but then, during the metamorphosis, it will start the synthesis of four different enzymes. And these enzymes are needed for urea synthesis, and therefore they will start the urea excretion before climbing on the terrestrial environment. Thank you.